I'm William Cooper, and you're listening to The Hour of the Time. Anyone, anyone who ever, ever comes to me and tells me that music doesn't penetrate directly to the soul, doesn't have a soul. I mean, that's the only interpretation I could ever make to any statement like that made by anyone. Tonight... Folks, we've got to get you back into the stream. And the way I do that is I quit telling you about my research and I quote exactly from the horse's mouth so you'll know that what you're hearing on this program, The Hour of the Time, is not being made up by me or anyone else. And it's there for anyone to find if you'll just get off your butts and go to the library and start digging and looking and searching and reading and quit listening to what you're told, including what you're told on this show. Remember, my admonition is not to ever believe anything you hear from the mouth of anyone or that you read from the book written by anyone or from Dan Rather in the 6 o'clock news or the President of the United States or Chuck Carter, Tom Valentine, Rush Limbaugh, the man who's sitting on half of his brain or indeed from even your own mother. For folks, the deception in this world right now that's being promulgated in order to bring about a one-world totalitarian socialist government is so deep that you better be standing on a stump or you might drown. Alice Bailey, folks, one of the key members of the New Age religion, wrote this. Quote, there is no question, therefore, that the work to be done in familiarizing the general public with the nature of the mysteries is of paramount importance at this time. These mysteries will be restored to outer expression through the medium of the church and the Masonic fraternity, unquote. And she's absolutely 100% correct. The question of just what the ancient mysteries were, folks, was answered in part by Albert G. Mackey, another 33rd degree Mason. He wrote a two-volume work entitled Encyclopedia of Freemasonry, and he wrote this under the subject of the ancient mysteries. Quote, Each of the pagan gods had, besides the public and open, a secret worship paid to him to which none were admitted but those who had been selected by preparatory ceremonies called initiation. This secret worship was termed the mysteries." Unquote. The student of the Masonic order can know that when Mr. Mackey writes, his writings can be relied upon. He is considered to be one of the premier Masonic authors of all time. These are the comments from the biographical information presented on Mr. Mackey in the front of his encyclopedia. Quote, His writings are universally esteemed for their sincerity, honest records, and common sense. He was a leader in research who valued accuracy. Unquote. Carl Cloudy, another Mason who writes on the subject of the Lodge, also has words of praise for Mr. Mackey. Quote, he was one of the greatest students and most widely followed authorities the Masonic world has ever known, unquote. And in his book entitled Introduction to Freemasonry, he praised Mr. Mackey with these words, quote, Albert Gallatin Mackey, one of the greatest students and most widely followed authorities the Masonic world has known. He is the great master of Freemasonry, unquote. 
So Mr. Mackey certainly can be believed when he tells his readers that the worship of pagan gods had a secret, non-visible worship besides the public one. The reader can believe him when he identifies the name of this secret worship. He told his readers, quote, this secret worship was termed the mysteries, unquote. Another who has written about the subject of the ancient mysteries was Manley P. Hall, another 33rd degree Mason whom I have quoted extensively before in this series. He has written in his book entitled, What the Ancient Wisdom Expects of Its Disciples. Quote, In the remote past the gods walked with men, and they chose from among the sons of men the wisest and the truest. With these specially ordained and illumined sons they left the keys of their great wisdom, which was the knowledge of good and evil. These illumined ones founded what we know as the ancient mysteries." Unquote. Now in case you weren't listening there, this is a dead giveaway and an admission that the gods that walked with men were known, at least in the Bible, as Satan. For he says here, and I'm going to read this again for you folks, because I know some of you just didn't pick it up. Because I know how the minds of the sheeple operate. And there's a lot of sheeple listening. There's also a lot of people listening who aren't sheeple. And they know that I'm not talking to them. If the word sheeple applied to you makes you angry, then, folks, it is an indication that it fits you like a shoe, like a glove, that you are indeed one of the sheeple. Let me read it again. Quote, With these specially ordained and illumined sons, they left the keys of their great wisdom, which was the knowledge of good and evil. According to the Bible, the knowledge of good and evil was imparted to Adam when Satan enticed Eve to eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge, and she, in turn, enticed Adam. And what was the fruit of the tree of knowledge? It was the knowledge of good and evil. It was forbidden for man to know that. Now, I'm not making judgment on any of this. I'm just telling you what my research says. Remember, this is not a religious program. And while I, myself, personally, have my own idea of what my own religion is. I am in no means trying to foist it off on anyone else. Let me continue. He wrote, and we're talking about Manley P. Hall, 33rd degree Freemason, he wrote additional comments about these mysteries in another of the books he has written called The Secret Teachings of All Ages. And I would urge you, if you can afford it, to buy that book. It's a very expensive book. I have a copy of it in my library. It cost me $150 and it was worth every single penny of it, I can assure you. Quote, The arcana, defined as being a secret or hidden knowledge of the ancient mysteries, were never revealed to the profane, defined as those not initiated into the inner mysteries, except through the media of symbols. You're going to find, folks, that symbols mean more than you will ever begin to understand unless you've waded deep into the stream of the mystery Babylon, as I have. Quote, Symbolism fulfilled the dual office of concealing the sacred truths from the uninitiated and revealing to those qualified to understand the symbols, unquote. Mr. Hall dedicated the latter book to, quote, the proposition that concealed within the emblematic figures, allegories, and rituals of the ancients is a secret doctrine concerning the inner mysteries of life, which doctrine has been preserved in toto, which means in the whole, among a small band of initiated minds since the very beginning of the world, unquote. He went on to mention that the mysteries, quote, were secret societies binding their initiates to inviolable secrecy and avenging with death the betrayal of their sacred trusts, unquote. And to this day they take blood oaths. Mr. Hall told the reader that no one is to know the identity of those who have received the secrets. In fact, he wrote, quote, The true adept and initiate shall reveal his identity to no man unless that one is worthy to receive it, unquote. 
He further explained where some of these initiates lived when he wrote, quote, No reasonable doubt can exist that the initiates of Greece, Egypt, and other ancient countries possessed the correct solutions to those great cultural, intellectual, moral, and social problems which in an unsolved state confront the humanity of the 20th century." Unquote. He further amplified that thought when he added this, quote, Neoplatonism, defined by Mr. Hall as a school founded by Plotinus around 240 A.D., concerning itself with the problems of metaphysics, which he calls the study of knowledge, recognizes the existence of a secret and all-important doctrine which from the time of the earliest civilizations had been concealed within the rituals, symbols, and allegories of religions and philosophies." Unquote. So, in summary, it is possible, folks, to understand what these ancient mysteries were. And there appears to be at least four truths gleaned from the information provided in the comments made previously and these truths appear to be. One, the ancient mysteries had two forms of worshiping the same God. Two, the knowledge of the true God was reserved for those who had been entrusted with the secrets, and not for those whom they call the profane. Three, those who understood those secrets were sworn to the strictest secrecy. And four, those who had knowledge of the secrets claimed to possess all of the answers to all of the problems of mankind. Now, there was an additional secret for the secret bearers. They had to be initiated in a private initiation ceremony. Albert Pike, General Albert Pike, a Southern Confederate general during the Civil War, wrote this. Quote, initiation was considered to be a mystical death, and the perfect epoped was then said to be regenerated, newborn, restored to a renovated existence of life, light and purity, unquote. In fact, folks, this, quote, newborn, unquote, experience is similar to the experience the, quote, born again, unquote, Christians go through. The Christians call their experience a second birth just as the Masons do. In fact, Albert Pike calls a similar ceremony a, quote, born-again, unquote, experience, and he wrote this, quote, In the Indian mysteries, the third degree, the initiate is said to be born again, unquote. The ceremony in the ancient mysteries has been described by the Masonic writer Manly P. Hall. Quote, In the ancient system of initiation, the truth seeker must pass through a second birth, and those who attained this exalted state were known thereafter as, quote, the twice born, unquote. This new birth must be personally earned through a complete regeneration of character and conduct, unquote. This new birth ceremony involves a symbolic death, according to the mason Kenneth Mackenzie, and he wrote this, quote, in the ancient mysteries, the aspirant could not participate in the highest secrets until he had been placed in the coffin. In this, he was symbolically said to die, and his resurrection was to the light." Unquote. Now remember I told you about the initiation that George Bush underwent in the crypt, also known as the tomb, the skull and bones, the brotherhood of death at Yale University? This is what they're talking about. During a press conference, a reporter asked George Bush if he was a Christian, and he replied thusly, quote, If you're asking if I have been born again, the answer is yes, unquote. And indeed, he had. Modern-day Masons participate in an almost similar ceremony to the one described by these Masonic writers. In the third degree, called the Master Mason degree, inside the Blue Lodge, the candidate is actually knocked off of his feet by several of the Masons in attendance. He is wrapped up in a blanket and moved to the western end of the temple. 
There, after further ceremony, he is raised up by a grip called the Master's Grip or the Grip of the Lion's Paw. Those who learned the mysteries also learned that they had a secret project, one that was described by Albert Pike in his book entitled Morals and Dogma. Mr. Pike wrote this, quote, Behold our object, the end, the result, of the great speculations of antiquity, the ultimate annihilation of evil and restoration of man to his first estate by a Redeemer, a Messiah, a Christos, the incarnate word, reason, or power of deity." Unquote. I urge you all, if you can find a copy of Morals and Dogma by Albert Pike, to purchase it, take it home, and read it. Mr. Hall told his readers that those who had been initiated into the mysteries were the secret power behind the governments of the past. He wrote this about these ancient initiates in his book entitled, What the Ancient Wisdom Expects of Its Disciples. Quote, they are the invisible powers behind the thrones of earth, and men are but marionettes dancing while the invisible ones pull the strings. We see the dancer, but the master mind that does the work remains concealed by the cloak of silence." Unquote. Remember, I told you folks that if you don't open your mind, and if you don't quit believing dogma, if you don't quit believing what people tell you, if you don't stop qu believing what Dan Rather tells you on the 6 o'clock news, or your local minister down at your church, or your mother, or the President of the United States, and if you don't start digging to find the truth yourself, you, you, the sheeple, are the marionettes dancing while the invisible ones pull the strings. And until you change that pattern of your life, you will always be the puppet on the end of someone else's string. And I know that that's not what you want to be, is it? Well, if it's not, change your life now. Stop believing what you're told, including what you hear on this show, unless it checks out in your own research, your own experience, your own digging. Each of us must find our own truth. And if our we are really looking and digging, we're ultimately going to come to something near the same truth for all of us. And I can tell you now, that most of us have been living in fantasy land for all of our lives. We don't even know anything near what the truth of any matter is. And we must begin an honest search, starting from the beginning, wiping the slate clean, cleansing our mind, and looking at the world, beginning again, as though through the eyes of a newborn child, and you will find that most of what you've ever been taught in your entire life is a lie. Is a lie. Other writers, folks, have confirmed the thoughts of Mr. Hall. A Masonic scholar named George Steinmetz also acknowledged that these mysteries exist and that some of the members inside the Masonic lodges are custodians of the secrets. He has written this in his book entitled Freemasonry, Its Hidden Meaning. Quote, Ancient secret doctrine, which is concealed in Masonic allegory and symbolism. It was but to preserve these truths for future generations that Masonry was perpetuated. Unquote. And if that is true, why is it a secret? Why not tell us all what this secret doctrine is? For modern man is not like ancient man when he didn't know how to read or reason or understand. Modern man has the capability to understand anything that is put before him and accept it if it is the truth and reject it if it is a lie. So why the secrecy? The secrecy is because, folks, the real secret of Mystery Babylon is how to control everyone else. And if they reveal these secrets, they won't have the control, for it'll be in the hands of everyone. That is the greatest secret of the secret societies. 
Another writing of Manley P. Hall was this, quote, Much of the ritualism of Freemasonry is based upon the trials to which candidates were subjected by the ancient hierophants. Hierophant is defined as the high priest of the mysteries. Before the keys of wisdom were enthroned to them, unquote. The ancient mysteries had a beginning. According to Mr. Mackey, he wrote about where they started. Quote, the first of which are those of Isis and Osiris in Egypt. The most important of these mysteries were the Osiric in Egypt, unquote. Another writer, Edmund Ronane, an ex-Mason, confirmed that the Masons were involved in the worship of Osiris when he wrote this in his book entitled The Master's Carpet, quote, Masonry's ceremonies, symbols, and the celebrated legend of Hiram in the Master Mason's degree were directly borrowed from the ancient mysteries or the secret worship of Baal, Osiris, or Tammuz. Unquote. This is a direct admission that Freemasonry stems directly out of Mystery Babylon, the ancient mystery religion, the worship of Baal, the golden calf, representative of the house during which that 2,000 year period the sun resided. The sun, the symbol of the light, Lucifer, the intellect, the gift, primordial knowing. Albert Pike then detailed where the mysteries went after their beginnings in Egypt. He wrote this in Morals and Dogma. Quote, From Egypt the mysteries went to Phoenicia and were celebrated at Tyre. Osiris changed his name and became Adonai, or Dionysus, still the representative of the sun. In Greece and Sicily, Osiris took the name of Bacchus. So the ancient mysteries conceal an important mystery kept secret from the average person. The mystics claim that this mystery has been concealed from the world for centuries. Even though they had taken the mystery to other continents, those who believed in this religion were yet to take it to America. That was yet to come, and we will get to that, I promise you. And it will... I also promise you, amaze you. Lafayette, who was a very famous and noted pirate and a member of Freemasonry and the Knights Templar, said this, quote, an invisible hand is guiding the populace, unquote. Arthur Edward Waite, a prolific writer on secret societies, has written this, quote, beneath the the broad tide of human history, there flow the stealthy undercurrents of the secret societies, which frequently determine in the depths the changes that take place upon the surface." Unquote. Another who wrote about the power just underneath the surface was President Woodrow Wilson, President of the United States of America, who made this startling statement. He made this statement, yet it was ignored but it should never go ignored from this point forward. Quote, There is a power so organized, so subtle, so complete, so pervasive, that they had better not speak above their breath when they speak in condemnation of it. Unquote. So these two writers have warned America that secret societies had been arranging the major events of the past, and President Wilson warned those who were quick to condemn these organizations that they had better be cautious. Albert Pike also connected the secret societies with a secret belief in his book entitled Morals and Dogma. He wrote that all secret orders and associations, quote, now remember, he says, all, all, secret orders and associations, quote, had two doctrines, one concealed and reserved for the masters, the other public, unquote. Now one such secret society with two doctrines was the Illuminati, and Professor Weishaupt, its founder, boasted of his organization's secrecy. He realized that this secrecy would enable them to decide the fate of nations, and because their deliberations were secret, no outsider could interfere. He wrote this, 
quote, The great strength of our order lies in its concealment. Let it never appear in its own name, but always covered by another name and another occupation. Unquote. Weishaupt later wrote about that secrecy in a letter to a fellow member of the Illuminati. Quote, Nothing can bring this about but hidden societies. Hidden schools of wisdom are the means which will one day free men from their bonds. Princes and nations shall vanish from the earth. Unquote. Folks, don't go away. We've got to stop for a break. I'll be right back after this very short pause. Don't forget, folks, this Monday night, March 15th, from 8 p.m. to 11, I'll be at the Lafayette Hotel at 2223 El Cajon Boulevard in San Diego, California. That's this coming Monday night, Monday, March 15th, at 8 p.m. till 11. I'll be at the Lafayette Hotel at 2223 El Cajon Boulevard in San Diego, California. I'll be giving a three-hour presentation entitled The Sacrificed King. This is on the Kennedy assassination. I'm going to have footage there that you've never seen before. I'm going to show you the direct, and I mean direct, absolute occult connection to the Kennedy assassination. I'm going to tell you what group killed our president, murdered our president, if you will. I'm going to show you the footage of what Dealey Plaza really is so that you'll see that this is not just an innocent park in the city of Dallas. I'm going to show you where Dallas really is and what the occult significance of its location means. And when you leave there, folks, you're going to understand more about the workings of the world and who assassinated our president and why than you ever have before. You're also going to see that uh, Oliver Stone knew all of this and chose to deceive the American people because he is one of those who are bringing about the New World Order. And his movie, JFK, was designed to convince all of us that our government doesn't work, that constitutional government can't work, that it's turned against us, and it's not true, folks. Our constitutionally instituted and established government had absolutely nothing to do with the Kennedy assassination. As all of those who show up on Monday night, March 15th, 8 p.m., we'll find out. Now, if you're not a CAGI member, you can purchase your tickets in advance. And uh, one of the places is the Controversial Bookstore in San Diego. It's also a place where you can get some of the books that are banned or hard to get or are suppressed that you need in your personal library in order to understand all of what you're learning on this show and, and a lot of what you're never going to hear on this show simply because there isn't enough time. And all of you should be engaged in your own private research looking for the truth. Now, if you'd like to call and find out about this conference, which actually starts on Friday and goes through the whole weekend, there's a lot of Looney Tune people there spouting a lot of BS and disinformation and crap and just out-and-out out lies. And there are some people there who are valiantly, as I am, trying to get the truth out and, and uh, inform people. But here's the number in case you'd like to call, in case there are some of the speakers that you'd like to go and listen to during that weekend. The number is 619-492-8588. That's 619-492-8588. Well, folks, you've heard all through this series of broadcasts about a group of men supposedly with the only truly mature minds in this world who are going to set up a utopia on Earth, a heaven on Earth, if you will, and that they're the ones who are going to rule through a benevolent despotism. And they call this utopia the great society, the new world order, the utopian philosophy, all of these things. Now, Lyndon Johnson, Lyndon Baines Johnson, was a member of this secret society. He was, in fact, a 33rd degree Freemason. And his great society that he envisioned was exactly what we're talking about here. And you can see that Johnson, a great socialist, a Marxist, secretly, set us on the road to socialism by setting up this great welfare state, which he called the Great Society. It's one and the same, folks. It's the same. 
George Bush's New World Order is the same. The New World Order that our forefathers envisioned was the same. The great society talked about during the Peasants' Revolt in England was the same. The same that is coming unless we wake up to stop it. And you can see by the welfare state how well it really works. It doesn't work at all. It never will work. It can't work. These people are Looney Tunes. If you believe the exoteric version of what they intend to bring about, you see they have no intention of bringing about a utopia, a heaven on earth, a great society, not at all. That's to lure the unwary, the foolish, the great mass of followers that make up the lower degrees of this secret society so that they will support the completion of the great work, the plan. They really intend this to be something along the lines of what Hitler attempted to establish. They talk about it in terms of a great cleansing where certain religions... Certain people, certain races will literally be eliminated from this earth. And they are convicted through their own words, ladies and gentlemen, as you are hearing tonight. You've heard in other broadcasts. For when I feel that you are getting to the point where <clears throat> you're not understanding what's happening, I go back, as I'm doing tonight, and quote these people directly from their own mouths. I'm going to do that again tomorrow night, folks, so be ready. Let me continue. The secret societies were created to bring the world to the new society known as the New World Order. The members of these organizations obviously feel that their goals are so noble that they may perform whatever tasks are required to bring them to that goal and that goal to fruition. This means, folks, that murder plunder and lying all become acceptable as long as these methods assist its members in obtaining their goal. But the Freemasons, or Freemasons as the true term began, want the world to know that they are not one of the societies involved in changing the world's civilization, and they're quick to rush to their own defense. However, when you go back and read their own history and their own words, you can see that they have literally no defense, for they are convicted by the words of their leaders, by the very words of their leaders, and, folks, by their deeds. For it was General Albert Pike who created, through the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry, the Knights of the Ku Klux Klan. It was the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry that created the branch known as Benai Berith, which then created the ADL, or the Anti-Defamation League, which is nothing but an organization of criminals who have murdered, who have bombed, who have lied. And just recently, one of their revealed crimes was spying, putting spies within the police organizations of the United States of America and spiriting out files and records. And all of the Jews in the United States support this criminal organization to their great shame, and those of you who feel that the Jews are responsible for all of this, you are wrong. Most Jews don't know any more about this than you did. And they are being used just as you are being used, and just as I have been used in my life. In all time, truth has been hidden under symbols, wrote Albert Pike. And he also wrote this, Symbols are nevertheless ingenious veils that cover the truth. Now, Albert Pike was the sovereign grand commander of the southern jurisdiction of the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry. The Scottish Rite now controls world Freemasonry. There certainly seems, folks, to be a power in knowing something that you can't tell your family, friends, children, or business acquaintances. And Adam Weishaupt said it best with this selection from his writings, quote, of all the means I know to lead men, the most effectual is a concealed mystery, unquote. And that is true, I've found in my research, that the vast fools, the followers, flock to the mysteries and the promise of learning some secret during their climb up the ladder of degrees of initiation. The truth is that only a very few ever learn anything, and what they learn is how to control the rest. 
The power of hidden symbols was alluded to by another writer, this time Foster Bailey in his book entitled The Spirit of Freemasonry. Quote, a symbol veils or hides a secret and is that which veils certain mysterious forces. These energies, when released, can have a potent effect. Unquote. And indeed, they can, as we are all feeling now the pinch of the power. There are many who can attest to that simple truth. Organizations with concealed or secret initiation ceremonies abound in America and indeed around the world. College fraternities and sororities teach the college student to accept secret initiation ceremonies and hidden knowledge at a young age. The Masons, intended for adult males, have similar organizations for their young sons and daughters and other secret organizations for their wives. And all of these organizations tend to prepare their male members for further service in the master secret organization, the Masons. However, the Masons are quick to point out that they conceal their truths from the general public. Manly P. Hall, for instance, wrote this, quote, It is for the adepts, an adept is defined by the dictionary as one who is an expert, but there is an esoteric definition that shall be discussed later. Quote, it is for the adepts, one to understand the meaning of the symbols, unquote. He further instructed his readers that understanding the symbols could make one wise, quote, and understanding of these symbols is the beginning of wisdom, unquote. Max Toth, a writer about the Great Pyramid of Giza in Egypt, also wrote about the purpose of symbols, and he said, quote, The knowledge of the ancient mysteries was never revealed to the layman except through the media of symbols. Symbolism fulfilled both the need to conceal sacred truths from the uninitiated and to offer a language for those qualified to understand it. Now, whatever these secrets are, folks, one writer on the subject feels it is time to make them public. Alice Bailey, one of the key writers supporting the New Age movement, wrote this, quote, The hour for the ancient mysteries has arrived. These ancient mysteries were hidden in numbers, in ritual, in words, and in symbology. These veil the secret, unquote. Another writer who writes on the order, Carl H. Cloudy, told anyone who read the Masonic literature that he had best understand the language or they would miss the true meaning of the words. He wrote, quote, He who hears but the words of Freemasonry misses their meaning entirely. Unquote. Rex Hutchins, a 32nd degree Mason who has written a book for the Masons, one so important that it was used to replace one written by Henry Clausen, a former sovereign commander, also informed his readers that his writings also concealed a secret. Quote, the word reveal means to re-veil, that is, to give one explanation and yet continue to maintain the mystery of the symbol by not explaining it in a full and complete manner, unquote. So the language code must be broken if one is to learn the truth about the Masonic order. The reason that this is so is because the Masons have admitted that they have concealed the true meaning of some of their language. However, it is possible, folks, to know the true meanings of at least some of the hidden language. And the listener can be certain that the discovered interpretations are correct because the Masons themselves have revealed the hidden meanings of some of their symbols in some of their own literature. The secret societies, folks, that have concealed their purposes in hidden meanings, concealed writings, and private initiation ceremonies are admittedly very powerful. One who recognized that power was Benjamin Disraeli, the Prime Minister of England in the late 1880s, who said this in the House of Commons on July 14th in 1856. Quote, There is in Italy a power which we seldom mention in this house. I mean the secret societies. It is useless to deny because it is impossible to conceal that a great part of Europe, the whole of Italy and France, and a great portion of Germany, to say nothing of other countries, is covered with a network of these secret societies. What are their objects? They do not want constitutional government. They want to change the tenure of the land, to drive out the present owners of the soil, and to put an end to ecclesiastical establishments, meaning religion, unquote. 
The Masons know about concealing secrets from the rest of the world. Carl Cloudy, a Masonic writer, told his readers that secrets are inside secrets, which are inside other secrets, and he wrote this, quote, Cut through the outer shell and find a meaning. Cut through that meaning and find another. Under it, if you dig deep enough, you may find a third, a fourth. Who shall say how many teachings? Unquote. And even the communists use concealment, for the communists were created by the mysteries. The cell system of the Communist Party was created by the mystery schools, which have used the same system for millennia. Nikolai Lenin, the Marxist communist who communized the Russian nation in the years following the Russian Revolution of 1917, wrote this, quote, We have to use any ruse, dodge, trick, cunning, unlawful method, concealment, and veiling of the truth, unquote. Many of the signs for identifying a communist or a member of the Communist Party are exactly the same as those symbols and signs used by Freemasons to identify each other. The use of secrecy to conceal thoughts from certain of the members of an organization or from the public is the device of those who have something to hide. That something is so horrible, so terrible, that knowledge of that secret must be kept from those who would have the most to lose by knowledge of that secret. In the case of the secret societies, it is a belief in Lucifer, also known as Satan or the devil. In the case of communism, it is the truth that the people living in a communist nation know that the system does not work. But those in a non-communist nation targeted for a communist government are not to learn that simple truth. They are to be told that the system is the culmination of man's upward search for a perfect society, a great society, if you will, a utopia on earth. And they must be deluded into believing that there is no cost in the change from their current form of government to the communist form. One of the things that I find so incredible is that they trap the intellectuals so easily. The intellectuals, the ones who are supposedly so good at using their brain, cannot even use their brain so much as to look into history to see that the first people that the communists, the international socialists, destroy, kill, sentenced to the labor camps, the gulag, if you will, are always the intellectuals. And history has recorded the brutality of the communists and the fact that millions of people have had to die as the communists installed that form of government. The evidence to support that condition will be discussed later in some other program. Now, secrecy is certainly not a part of the Christian religion today, although the Christian religion began in secret and was, in fact, a secret society. It is possible to know that nothing that Jesus said has been hidden from the Christians of today. He told the high priest in John, chapter 18, verse 20, quote, And in secret have I said nothing, unquote. The intentional concealing of an organization's beliefs and purposes by the use of hidden language and concealed symbols is reserved primarily to the secret societies and the nationwide Masonic lodges, or indeed a secret society. And in the beginning, the Christians had their secret symbols also. One of the most prominent was the symbol of the fish. The secret is simply the fact that certain of their members worship Lucifer, and that they keep that secret from the overwhelming majority of their own members and certainly the public is never to know this fact, if they can help it. And the evidence to support that conclusion is ample, but only to one who cares enough to look for it. The problem with most people is they don't care enough to look for anything except Wheel of Fortune on the television set. So the student of history has to discover the hidden meanings behind the symbols in the Masonic literature and in the secret initiation ceremonies to understand the Masonic order. One of the first symbols that needs to be examined is the symbol of the serpent, also called a snake or dragon. Manley P. Hall wrote that the use of this symbol is as old as early man when he wrote this in his book entitled The Secret Teachings of All Ages. Quote, Among nearly all these ancient peoples, the serpent was accepted as a symbol of wisdom, unquote, for it is from the serpent that man received the gift of intellect. Here Mr. Hall states that the serpent was a symbol of wisdom. It will be remembered that Lord Maitreya, the future New Age leader, also claimed to possess wisdom. Mr. Hall continued, quote, 
Serpent worship in some form has permeated nearly all parts of the earth. The serpent is the symbol and prototype of the universal Savior who redeems the world by giving creation the knowledge of itself and the realization of good and evil, unquote, an admission that the serpent, at least from the point of view of the Christian Bible, is Satan. And then Mr. Hall links the serpent with the ancient mysteries previously discussed. He continues with the comment that the serpent was worshipped by the priests of that religion. Quote, the priests of the mysteries were symbolized as a serpent, sometimes called Hydra, unquote. And then he pointed out that the ancient mysteries have been passed on to various other cultures and that they have been brought forward to the present day. Folks, we'll continue this tomorrow night. If you can, reach into your pockets, make out a check or money order to WWCR and send it to the address which you'll hear at the end of this broadcast. Also write to us and ask for a packet of information or call Stan and he'll give it into the mail immediately. Until tomorrow night, good night and God bless each and every single one of you.